Uh, hello, everyone. I propose to start as everybody, I believe, already joined. Uh, thank you for joining our today's webinar. My name is Alexander Mennik. I am a partner and the head of corporate and m &A practice at Golo Law Firm. Today with me also my colleague Victoria Bublichenko, who is the head of tax, restructuring, claims and recoveries practice at Golo. Few words about Golo. We are the leading Ukrainian law firm operating according to international standards. We have offices in Kyiv and Berlin. The firm operates for almost 20 years since 2003 and has been recognized by prestigious international rankings such as Legal 500, Chambers and Partners, IFLR 1000, Best Lawyers, Who is Who Legal. For the last eight years, Golo is ranked among top 10 leading law firms of Ukraine and currently holds the fourth place in the national rankings. The client portfolio of, of our firm includes large and medium-sized uh, national and foreign companies, banks, financial institutions, as well as private investors doing business in Ukraine or entering local or foreign markets. And of course, we support IT business. We would like to thank Digital Business Association Berlin Brandenburg and IT Ukraine Association for helping in their uh, in arranging this webinar. Today we will discuss the legal perspective and peculiarities of conducting IT business in Ukraine and why it is worth considering Ukraine for setting up legal presence here. In case any questions arise during the webinar, please feel free to put them to the chat and we will ask them during the Q&A session in the end. Okay, so I propose to start. It is well known fact that Ukraine has become an attractive harbor for IT business during the last decades. The growth of IT sector in Ukraine has been truly impressive, both in terms of revenue and workforce. For example, in 2010, the IT industry in Ukraine generated approximately $1.2 billion in revenue. By 2020, this number had soared to over $6 billion and keep rising despite the war. Ukraine has become a major player in the global IT outsourcing market. In 2010, for example, the export of IT services amounted to approximately $1 billion. By 2020, uh, and uh, this figure has surged to over 4.5 billion, showing a substantial increase. Even during the war in 2022, the IT services export was $7.3 billion, which is very good, I believe. And it is not only about the money, it is also employment trends, because in 2010, for example, the IT sector employed around 25,000 professionals, and by 2020, this number is 200,000 IT specialists. The number of IT companies operating in Ukraine has also uh, significantly grown from 500 companies to 5,000 in 2023. And currently, the investment inflow reached among 500 million now. These numbers reflect that Ukraine is a prominent player in the global IT mark, uh, market. And of course, this growth is attributable to a combination of factors. First of all, it is the taxation. Earlier and now, IT business actively used private entrepreneurs as independent contractors instead of hiring employees, which allowed reaching around 5% tax burden for the remuneration to staff. In addition uh, to this, in 2020-22, the new legal framework for IT sector was launched called DSCT, which created additional benefits, which we will discuss later on. Also, the important factor of growth is highly skilled specialists who know English and are oriented to work hard. IT business can now choose different staff employment forms choose whenever whichever is more convenient which we will also discuss today and ukraine is a cost efficient jurisdiction which is relatively cheap to maintain business here and rent property 
and uh, have good location in Eastern Europe, which allows easy access both to Western and Eastern markets. Undoubtedly and predictably, the war affected IT business in Ukraine. In order to understand the change, we brought several numbers to the slides regarding IT services export. So as you can see, um, the share of IT services in export structure always was substantial and has grown in the second quarter of 2022 to up to 15%. But um, I think it mostly was reached due to the drop of export of other goods and services. But if we talk about money, uh, export uh, figures in money, uh, we can see that for example, in fourth quarter of 2021, just before the invasion, the IT activity indicator reached an all-time high with an influx of $2.1 billion of export uh, within the quarter. However, the situation take, taken some uh, sharp uh, turn since then due, due to the war and average volumes of IT services export dropped to average $1.7 billion per quarter. However, in any case, we see that the total export of IT services in 2022 and 2023 is better than it was during the COVID and pre-COVID times. Another statistics about IT companies. So as you can see, there are around 5,000 active IT companies now in Ukraine, while almost 700 of them have already become the city residents. And this number is constantly growing. And it is despite the fact that the city regime was launched one week before the uh, full-scale invasion. So uh, I propose to analyze more in detail what is the city and what it offers to investors. So what is it? The city is a virtual voluntary entry economic zone with preferential taxation for IT business and other benefits. But you can ask why it was necessary to introduce this framework or to introduce new regulation if business showed growth. Again, it is because, as mentioned previously, most of IT businesses in Ukraine are structured through active involvement of uh, private entrepreneurs as independent contractors in a manner which is not completely transparent. So, of course, the huge benefit of their involvement is taxation. Private entrepreneur pays only 5% income tax in comparison to around 40% tax burden for salary to employees. So the difference is substantial. According to Ukrainian law, it is not prohibited for a company or a non-resident company to order services or works from independent contractor as a private entrepreneur. But this cooperation shall be independent. This means that such individual contractor shall act as any other independent contracting party and cannot be treated as an employee. It, it shall not have vacations, sick leaves or other social uh, guarantees. Uh, shall not obtain fixed monthly, monthly salary, shall not get a, a working place at the office of employer, shall not adhere employer's internal rules and regulations, uh, and shall not act as company's employee and perform some, uh, for example, job function. If it happens and company treats private entrepreneur as an employee, it is considered by authorities as hidden employment and tax evasion and entails fines and liability for company and its officials. Moreover, considering lack of transparency, such a company structures were not completely understandable for foreign investors, which in some cases prevented investment attraction. So tax authorities and uh, our uh, labor inspections were not happy about uh, such a structures of IT companies. And in order to uh, save uh, IT business, I believe government uh, proposed to find a compromise. And DSCT was introduced and respective law was adopted. They tried to combine all the best 
in order to legally ensure flexibility, which is necessary for IT business, and at the same time, bring more transparency and uh, prevent IT business from using independent contractors in the gray, uh, as a gray zone. So in general, from legal perspective, the DSCT regime is considered beneficial as it is easy to join it and uh, liability criteria are relatively simple. It provides beneficial taxation, which we will discuss later. It pro provides uh, different uh, options for a flexible employment model. You can either uh, employ staff or work with independent contractors, or uh, you can use gig contractors. It introduced new venture investment tools which were not uh, regulated by Ukrainian law earlier, such as convertible loans, liquidation preferences, uh, liquidated dam damages options, and employee stock option plans, warranties and indemnities, and so on. Also, it introduced additional regulation for the non-disclosure agreements to protect both companies and staff and introduced non-compete agreements, which are new for Ukrainian law. Uh, and of course, uh, this instrument was actively used before, but it was not enforceable due to our Ukrainian regulations. And uh, the new law has provided uh, some uh, amendments to IP protection, uh, which allow uh, IP protection uh, guarantees for IT specialists and IT companies. Of course, some uh, IT companies consider joining DSCT as a risk, as they are not confident in the state's policy, uh, which is fair enough. They are afraid that the government may simply uh, change the requirements or tax rates uh, over the years or two. However, it is worth mentioning that the law guarantees that the rules will not be changed within 25 years. So we hope it will go as it's promised. So in terms of the ICT, we propose to look on how to become its resident. And I propose to start first from the uh, uh, from analysis at uh, who cannot be a resident of the ICT in any case. The law sets an exhaustive list of entities or persons who are strictly prohibited from joining the ACT. Basically, it contains uh, standard anti-money laundering measures, prohibit, uh, prohibits any Russian, Iranian, or North Korean traces, sanctioned persons, um, or those who have non-transparent structures, bankrupts, and so on. You can see this list on the screen. So if your company falls under the restricted list, you will not be able to join DSCT in any case. However, if your company does not fall under this list, it doesn't mean that you are liable to be a DSCT resident automatically. So in these terms, I uh, propose to discuss who can become a DSCT resident. First of all, <clears throat> it is crucial to know that only Ukrainian companies can become a DSCT resident. So in case a foreign investor wants to join DSCT, he cannot join directly by its, his uh, foreign company or cannot join through a representative office established in Ukraine. It will re require, in any case, establishing a local subsidiary company. Secondly, this company shall conduct IT activities. For example, it can be software development, online and cloud services, IT education services, data processing, AI development, esports, cybersecurity, and other which you see on the screen. It should be noted that uh, the law provides that the government can supplement this list by additional types of activities. In addition to this, the potential candidate shall be sure that the company will be capable uh, to constantly comply with some other requirements. So, starting from the months following the inclusion of a company to DSCT register, such a company shall constantly comply with the following requirements. First, it's at least 90% of the annual income from IT activities. It is called by the law as qual qualified income. It means that in case your company has 
some of the types of activities which are not included to the list we seen on the previous slide. Uh, and income from such uh, activities exceeds 10%, uh, your company can lose the status of DACT resident. So for example, if your company have uh, real estate property and uh, you rent it out and half of the whole income of the company is generated by this uh, renting activity, you have the risk of losing status of DACT resident. Another requirement is to have at least nine average number of employees or gig contractors. So uh, as you can see, uh, if you have only contracted individual entrepreneurs uh, as independent contractors, you will not be able to join the ACT. You shall have either em uh, employed staff or in, uh, engaged gig contractors, at least nine average number. Uh, also, uh, they shall have uh, monthly remuneration in average amount of 1200 euro or more. Violation of mentioned criteria leads to exclusion of a company from the ACT uh, register and prohibition for use of the decreased tax rates in a month in which your company did not correspond to these activities. Meanwhile, it should be noted that and currently the easement, easements were introduced due to the martial law and until the cancellation of the martial law, the loss of the DACT resident status for violation of mentioned criteria do not apply. Of course, someone may ask, how can a startup meet the mentioned salary and employees requirements right from the start from the first month? It's impossible. In this regard, the law provides easements for startups, which allows uh, for them also to join the ACT. The ACT resident may have less than nine IT professionals and average remuneration level less than 1200 euro, provided that a company is not older than two years and company's income in the year before application for the DACT residentship, in the year of acquiring status of DACT residentship and the year after this do not uh, uh, surpass the threshold of 7.0 million uh, grievances, which is uh, approximately 200,000 euro now. And of course, if you want to register your company in the DACT register as a startup, you shall tick the relevant, uh, make a relevant statement and tick the relevant uh, checkbox in the application where applying for this. So basically, as you can see, the access to DACT is pretty simple uh, for all interested applicants. Uh, to sum up, uh, the process of joining the city will in involve several steps. At first step, uh, you will need to analyze the business structure of your IT company. First, you shall check whether company does not fall under the list of those prohibited applicants, that you have a local legal entity, and ensure that uh, this local entity has a transparent corporate structure and relevant IT activities. Then you need to ensure compliance with requirements regarding types of uh, uh, requirements regarding the uh, average amount of uh, number of staff and average salary. The next step you want to do uh, is submission of the application to Ministry of Digital Transformation. The application is pretty simple. It contains information about the company, its officials and list of activities. Also, uh, it uh, contains assurances from the company that it will comply with the law established criteria and assurance that the company uh, does not fall under the list of prohibited applicants. Uh, the application is submitted electronically and is considered by a ministry within 10 business days. By the general rule, after acquiring the status of DACT resident, such shall, uh, it will be required to submit reports. There are two types of reports, 
to be submitted by the DSC to residents is initial report, which is submitted uh, by the end of first three months of being the resident of the city and then annually uh, reports which confirm uh, compliance with the law established requirements. The statements made in reports should be supported by an appropriate independent audits report. So the state in general doesn't want to control residents of the city and they shifted this liability to auditors. So from one hand, it is, uh, I think it's uh, positive because uh, the regulator does not intervene into activity of uh, business. From other hand, it creates some additional costs for IT business uh, in, in terms of payment to auditors. Also, it should be noted that now, due to martial law, DSCT residents are exempted from the reporting obligation until the cancellation or abolition of martial law in Ukraine. And a uh, few words about forms of staff engagement. As I mentioned before, DSCT residents uh, have an opportunity to enter into employment contract with their employees involved independent contractors or gig specialists. In terms of standard employment, it should be noted that the preference here is that DSCT resident can include employment contracts which are a special form of employment agreement where the parties may set certain additional conditions. Uh, for example, it, they can prescribe uh, additional liability for employee, special compensation and bonuses, uh, prescribe uh, additional grounds for termination of employment and so on. Uh, it should be noted that it is an advantage for business because in other sectors of economy, conclusion of employment contract as a special form of employment agreement uh, can be done only in exceptional cases. But the best part about DSCT uh, from my perspective is uh, that in addition to options for employee or independent contractor model, DSCT residents can choose gig contractors. Uh, it is a special form of cooperation, which is kind of compromise between independent contractor and uh, employment. A gig contract is a civil law contract, which may stipulate that a gig specialist provides, for example, services or perform certain works, or uh, it can establish that uh, the gig contractor performs all work ex officio are similar to employees. For example, the function of the specific job position like accountant, lawyer, developer, director, janitor, or, or so on. Also, the payments to gig contractor can be charged on an hourly basis or he can receive a fixed payment for the completed project. Also, a uh, gig contractor can work uh, regularly irregularly on a flexible schedule or according to internal rules and regulations of the company. At the same time, to the contrary of uh, independent contractor, the gig specialists have uh, social guarantees similar to employees. It's paid leave, sick leave, maternity leave, uh, and so on. So again, it is kind of mix of flexibility which is provided in the contracts with private entrepreneurs. And uh, at the same time, it provides guarantees for uh, gig specialists like it, it is provided for employees. But the most important thing here is that it is not regulated by employment law. So some strict rules such as, for example, military accounting or termination rules do not apply to gig specialists and can apply to only to employees. For better understanding of differences, we brought the comparative table on the slide, so you can see the differences on the screen. So if we speak about private entrepreneurs, for example, uh, as I said, they act as 
independent contractors without any social guarantees. So legally, you cannot provide them with the sick leave or something like this. Of course, in practice, uh, they are granted by so, but it, if you your company performs such activities and compensate individual entrepreneur for a leave or something like this, uh, it raises the risk of hidden employment. At the same time, independent contractor means that he is not legally bound to your company and can provide services or works to any other company on the market. And if we speak about employees, it's standard employment under the employment contract, which is regulated by employment law. Geek specialist uh, is engaged under the geek contract and uh, relations uh, he has uh, social guarantees and relations between gig contractor and company is regulated by civil law, which also provides some flexibility because the civil law declares the freedom of agreement. So you basically can include to the contract any provisions you like. In comparison to this, private entrepreneurs and relations with them are regulated by commercial uh, code and in terms of employees it's only employment law to the nature of their involvement private entrepreneurs can only provide services or perform certain works they cannot act on a specific job position uh, because it uh, raises again the risk of hidden employment employees can only perform job function uh, according to their uh, uh, in according to internal rules and regulation and their job description. Big contractors can do both. They can act as employee, so perform specific job function, or uh, they can provide certain services or perform work. So full flexibility here. As to the termination and dismissal, again, if you speak about private entrepreneurs, you can terminate contract according to the terms which is set in the contract with them or in the law. Uh, if you speak about employees, you can dismiss an employee only according to strict procedure which is prescribed by the law. And if you violate this procedure, you bear risk of uh, lawsuits. And in ter terms of geek specialists, the law provides certain balance of interest. So from one hand, uh, business is protected because it can simply without any reason terminate the agreement with geek specialist. But uh, in such a case, if the termination is made day by day, certain uh, compensation shall be paid to geek specialists which is determined based on the contract. And of course, the last uh, but not the least uh, difference is taxation. So uh, as you can see, as I was uh, mentioning, uh, independent contractors, uh, private entrepreneurs pay 5% in 5% uh, income tax and minimum social contribution. Uh, in terms of involvement geek specialists and em employees, DA city resident uh, will pay one with a half percent more. So the military tax also will apply. Uh, it's uh, like short introduction and I propose to discuss tax matter uh, in more detail. Um, for this, I'm delighted to pass the word to my colleague, Victoria. Uh, Victoria. Please share your thoughts and expertise on this. Thank you very much, Alexander. Dear colleagues, uh, I would also like to thank you for joining our today's event and following the key legal features disclosed by Alexander, I would like to shed some light on the tax peculiarities of this special regime, the SCD. So uh, let's begin. DSCD provides its residents with extensive tax preferences that allow decreasing tax burden both for companies' business profits and on the specialist's remuneration budget. To show this in more detail, firstly, I would like to start with the specificities of corporate income tax in DSCD. 
uh, corporate profit taxation. Here uh, you can see uh, two options available for the city residents. Dear city residents can actually choose between two regimes of taxation here. They can pay corporate income tax on a general basis, uh, that is the general system. Um, as an alternative, they can pay withdrawn capital tax within the special system. Uh, let's compare these two and see the benefits available for the city residents. Uh, here we have highlighted the key points to be noted. Uh, first thing, as you can see on the slide, the first difference is the subject of, ta subject of taxation. As for the general system, it is income. As for the si special system, the subject of taxation is limited with the defined list of transactions. Uh, we will speak uh, in more detail about these tran transactions uh, later. Uh, and now uh, we will switch to another difference. Uh, as you can see, there is also the matter of application of special adjustments. Uh, as a general rule, under the general system, these adjustments to define the taxable financial result are applicable. They may either reduce or increase such financial result. Um, speaking about the special system, these adjustments uh, will not apply. Also, further, the tax rate also are different. Corporate income tax will be at the rate of 18% and the withdrawn capital tax within the special system is only 9%. However, the withdrawn capital tax may be higher in the amount of 18% when it goes to the taxation of controlled foreign companies' profits and controlled transactions that are not in line with the armaments principle. Also, one more difference is connected with the withholding tax. In case of uh, the general system, this tax is paid additionally. In case of special system, its sum can be deducted from the withdrawn capital tax payable for the respective reporting period. And the final important difference is uh, the difference in the reporting period. Speaking about the general system, uh, there may be um, several options. Uh, they may be a quarterly or yearly basis when the special system provides the yearly period for reporting. Um, there is one more important remark uh, speaking about the taxation of profit. As a general rule, <clears throat> it's possible for the ACT residents uh, uh, to uh, be withdrawn capital taxpayers only until they comply with the residency criteria. Otherwise, uh, they will be obliged to switch to the general income taxation system. This is the important note um, thing that should be noted by uh, all the IT companies who are going to become the DCT resident or have already become the resident. Um, <clears throat> further, I would like to show a few examples of uh, transactions which can be taxed by the withdrawn capital tax. As I've already mentioned, this tax, uh, um, the subject of taxation with this tax is limited to the defined list of transactions. Here on the slide, there are only a few um, basic examples which can be relevant for several IT businesses. However, of course, the full list of these transactions each is much wider. Uh, also, each transaction has its own requirements and conditions which shall be met to be taxed with the withdrawn capital tax. Uh, there are a lot of details, so uh, we will not uh, discuss them today. Uh, but as you can see, the example of the transaction taxable with the withdrawn cap capital tax can be dividend payment with some exceptions. Uh, for instance, um, reinvestment of dividends into share capital will not be taxed this way. Uh, payment of income generated in the course of joint business activity. Uh, most free of charge services and non-repayable financial aid, certain transactions in favor of non-residents, royalty payments in some cases, transfer of funds from our uh, from own accounts of the IT company in Ukraine to own accounts abroad. So these are um, typical and basic transactions uh, which uh, the city uh, residents may have. Um, Speaking about um, the choice, which taxation system uh, is better to choose? Uh, 
um, it's quite a complicated uh, issue because it will be uh, it will differ for different IT businesses for different IT companies. Uh, this should be assessed on a case by case basis, taking into account all the peculiarities of each particular IT company and business. Um, there are a few important questions uh, which should be uh, covered with the answers by you if you are interested in the DC residency and uh, application of tax benefits uh, in the course of uh, taxation of profit. Uh, first one is what are the core business activities of IT company? So uh, this uh, will also influence on the possibility and benefits of application of these or that tax exemptions. Who are the IT company's business partners? Where are the IT company's profits accumulated and who will receive income from the company's activity? Um, all these questions are important to define uh, which system of taxation of profits will suit uh, your company better. Uh, so uh, basically, this is a field of um, reflection and uh, analysis uh, from various sides, from the lawyers, from the accountants, and of course, from the managers and owners of the business to define uh, how to act better in the course of taxation of profits. Um, these three, three points are basic and something from what it's recommended to start, but of course there may be other circumstances, other specificities depending on your particular business. Our next topic is related to the taxation of specialists' remuneration. Uh, Alexander has already uh, said a few words about this, but uh, here um, on our slide, you can see more details about this. Um, basically, <clears throat> Um, personal income taxation burden for employees and gig specialists of the DSCT residents um, is um, significantly lower than the regular one, uh, which is applicable for the employees in other fields of economic activities. Taxation of salaries and uh, gig specialists remuneration is equal in terms uh, of tax rates. Um, personal income tax is 5% if annual income of the employee's salary or gig specialist remuneration is under uh, 240,000 euros per annum. Uh, in this case, uh, the DSCT resident uh, company is a tax agent and will pay this tax instead of the specialists. Uh, also, there is one more tax payable in this case, uh, the military levy, is, the rate is quite low, it's only 1.5%, and this tax will also be uh, declared and paid by the tax agent if, uh, um, in any case, in fact. Um, however, speaking uh, about the case when the amount of remuneration of salary or salary uh, exceeds uh, the limit of uh, 240,000 euros per annum, uh, there is another rule. Uh, in this case, the specialist uh, will uh, report uh, and uh, pay tax uh, individually uh, regarding the sum of the uh, which exceeds this limit. Also, there is uh, one more um, levy to be withheld, a uh, single social contribution. Um, it has a fixed amount and today <clears throat> it is set on the minimal level provided by the law. As of today, it's about um, 1,500 hryvnas, uh, that is about 40 euros only per month. Uh, this sum is quite low and quite beneficial uh, because in many other cases, uh, this um, social contribution uh, will not be uh, on the minimal level. And um, in some other cases, in other um, fields of economic activities, um, you can pay more for your employees uh, and personnel. Um, also, there is one important remark uh, a special, uh, regarding the special um, tax benefit connected with non-state pen uh, pension insurance and medical insurance. There is a rule uh, that there will be no personal income tax and military levy uh, for those amounts which were spent by the DSCT resident uh, on non-state pension insurance and medical insurance if such amounts are lower than 30% of the accrued income to the respective person. This is also quite beneficial condition 
and uh, applicable for the DS city residents. Um, and uh, <clears throat> a few words about benefits uh, for those individuals who take decision to invest in the city residents. Uh, there are also some benefits which have, can apply to these persons, particularly dividends received from the city resident on special corporate tax system, uh, in other words, those residents who pay uh, the withdrawn capital tax. These dividends are exempt from personal income tax and military levy in case when no dividends were distribute for, distributed for two calendar years in a row. Another one benefit is that expenses for purchase of shares in a startup DSC resident deduct the object of personal income taxation. This is quite a specific issue. Uh, there are um, several rules regarding this deduction uh, under the laws of Ukraine, uh, and uh, they define uh, the details of the applicability of this uh, tax rebate. Um, of course, all these uh, benefits are actual, first of all, for the residents of Ukraine. Um, as a conclusion, uh, I can summarize that uh, the taxation within the city is quite beneficial. Uh, you could see that it provides for um, two options for profit taxation. Uh, it provides for uh, beneficial options uh, for taxation of personnel's income. Uh, however, um, the most important remark here is uh, to comply with the residency criteria and monitor this compliance within the older period of the city residency. It's important because uh, if the company will not comply with them, it will be limited in application of uh, the tax benefits provided by the city. So basically, this is the most important point here. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank uh, you, Victoria. Uh, let me return. Okay. In any case, regardless of the city, I just wanted to make sure. So, regardless of the city, Ukraine uh, have uh, a lot of uh, possibilities for investment, and Ukraine is striving for investment. And we we are very open to any kind of business here in Ukraine. Of course, war introduces certain complications and challenges, but it is the best time for investment. And uh, we as a law firm always uh, try to find the best solution for our clients here. Now we will be happy to answer um, any questions if you have. Currently, we do not see any questions. I believe everything was clear enough. So no questions from what? audience and you can see on the screen our social medias and uh, we ask you to subscribe because you will be benefited from this you will get up-to-date information about all the legal developments in ukraine how it affects your business we provide legislative news we provide relevant ex uh, expert uh, pu publications and uh, event announcements you can approach us in any social network which is more convenient for you. And uh, the last slide is our contacts uh, and our beautiful pictures here. You can make a print screen, but in any case, we will share this presentation. And also you can simply scan this QR code and it will lead you to the proper place and you will find all the other information which will we didn't provide due to this short time. Okay, uh, thank you very much. I see the no questions here, and I wish all participants to be to stay safe and um, invest more in Ukraine. Goodbye. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye.